Hello everybody, it's finally here, it's Baldur's Gate 3. I'm so freaking excited. I'm going into this pretty much blind. I didn't touch the beta. I don't know if you're new here, if you've been here a while, but this is exactly up my alley. I'm a big, big Bioware fan. And so a lot of us during the drought of Bioware, the dearth of Bioware content that we've had, have been sort of magnetized over to the Baldur's Gate release, uh, but I've been very excited for quite a while now. My friends and I are quite excited. So yeah, and I've already kind of picked out who I think I'm gonna romance. Uh, I, we'll see, we'll see, but um, I, like I said, I didn't play the beta, didn't play the early access. I'm, I prefer going in mostly blind to these sorts of things. I don't like to be spoiled for stuff, but I know that we have some sort of mind worm. And essentially, also, welcome to Character Creator. I guarantee you that's what this is gonna be. So, let's see. Yeah, no, I prefer... Oh, and I have played Divinity 2. Oh, uh, really, really enjoyed that. Have almost, not, this is rookie numbers, but I have almost 100 hours in it. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look how good this looks. Oh, I recognize her, I think. I have never seen any of this. Oh my goodness. Oh no, it's the brain worm. Oh. oh. We have some sort of motivation basically to get it out of us. That's all I know. Oh, please no. No. Oh, no. <laughs> no. It looks really cool. Oh my gosh, look at it. No, I don't want to. I don't want to look. <laughs> Let me into the character creator. Yes, I want tutorials. Who are you? <laughs> um, also, I forgot to say this in the first like two minutes or whatever, but I am playing in a hotel. I am currently living in a hotel. If you're new here, um, I'm an archaeologist. I'm a traveling archaeologist. I do uh, field work in the West United States, and so I travel. I also, uh, in the last couple of years, have been living nomadically out of my vehicle. So I live the nomad life, but my current job that that I accepted is about a three month stint in a hotel in Northern California working up here and I partially took the job because I knew it would give me access to a hotel where I could bring my computer stuff and I could play Baldur's Gate 3 <laughs> without having to just like do it on like the occasional like once a month weekend binge at my sister's place. So that's, I'm, I might sound a little quiet, and that is because I am, uh, if I yell, I'll get kicked out of the hotel. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's where we're at. That's, I think that's everything. Let's see what we can do. Oh, yes, I'm ready to spend six hours in this thing. I'm gonna look at everybody. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, yeah, and like Divinity 2, you could play one of these characters. This is who I think I'm gonna romance. I think I'm gonna romance Karlak, but we'll see. What is this? Who are you? We'll see. I'm not generally, I'm not really into humans. You know, when you get a fantasy story, like, why would you romance a human? I'm just kind of bummed that I don't see, like, you know, there's no, we don't have any, like, dwarf companions. No, no half-orc. 
Not that thing. They're all fairly basic humanoids, but I don't know who this is. I don't know that one. Some people who know me might think I would go for a Starion. However, he seems a little ostentatious for me, and vampires aren't really my thing, honestly. Also, he's very obviously using his humor and charm to hide some, like, deep insecurities or something. At least for me, that's what I think. Um, she's cool, uh, but she's kind of evil, as far as I know. So, I don't, I don't think I'll get along like, super well with an evil person, because I plan on being a fairly good person. <laughs> Um, Shadowheart's cool, but kind of, at least as far, this is, this is all just me seeing, like, pictures of them, really. Um, I know that there's a druid somewhere <laughs> that we get to read. I'm sure most people have heard or seen that infamous scene. <laughs> but, Karlak looks right up my alley. I will say Will, uh, from the pictures, Will looks like he's pretty attractive. I will have to see, but Gale also? I don't know. I don't know what it is. We'll see. He, you know what? I think he kind of looks like Anders. Forgive me if you must. Um, but I did romance Anders in Dragon Age 2 and got my heart ripped in half. Um, let's see. Oh my goodness. Oh, I just... Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we have... Perfect. Oh, that was origin custom. Okay, so we have Let's see. There's a super nice graphic for it, but I think some of it even has changed. So we have Elf, Tiefling. Oh, she's adorable. She's adorable. Look at that tail. Look at that tail. Drow. This is the one I'm leaning towards. I am leaning towards Drow. I'm not even gonna look at human. Boring. Githyanki is interesting. She's got little pigtails. Oh my gosh. Dwarf, she looks awesome. And of course I am playing a woman. I mean, it's not of course, but I am playing a woman. If I ever have the chance to play a woman in a video game, I do. Um, half elf, she looks fine, she's cool. Uh, halfling, I will admit like the halfling and the gnome option does seem pretty fun. But, oh my gosh, the dragonborn. Once enslaved by dragons, they strive to be self-sufficient, not wanting to be beholden to anyone. And you can choose, like, there's, like, seven colors for them, I know. Um, and what's nice about the lizard people, <laughs> the reptiles in this game, is that they don't have boobs. <laughs> we are not doing the Skyrim <laughs> approach to lizard people, because lizards don't have mammary glands. <laughs> Half orc. I am not gonna lie. I was really leaning towards half orc. Ah, oh, but I'm 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 kind of torn between drow and half orc. But we'll see. Somebody said that you can uh, you can change the way that the drow look. So I guess I'm like I won't be an elf. But I pick, I'm like I'm gonna be a drow. Is the dark elf, you know? Um. But I just want to be beefy. I just want to be big and beautiful and beefy, so we'll see. But the drow driven to the Underdark, most drow have adopted a ruthless pragmatism, while the Loth sworn delight in the goddess's evil tenants, the Rizeldering, reject her attempt to overthrow the leader of the elven pantheon. Ooh, okay, we get proficiency with the rapier, short sword, and hand crossbow, boring weapons. I want a two-handed battle axe, <laughs> that's what I want. Can see up to the in the dark as most everybody can. Uh, Fey ancestry. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed, and magic can't put you to sleep. That is nice. Half orc creatures have intense emotion. Half orcs are more inclined to act than contemplate whether the rage burning their bodies compels them to fight, or the love filling their hearts inspires acts of incredible kindness. So we can see up to 12 meters. The relentless endurance would be nice, and savage attacks. Oh, and I guess my D&D background, I have played D&D, &D. I have a lot of D&D &D materials, I read a lot of D&D, &D, like, related stuff, um, like the, like the books and, like, the lore books and, like, um, stuff like that, um, but I haven't played in a long time, uh, I used to play with friends, and that was before COVID, and we just never really got our groups back together or did it digitally, so, haven't played much Dungeons and Dragons, but I have lately been like creating my own characters just for fun and to fill the void before Baldur's Gate. <laughs> so, I have an idea of a character I want to do, but we'll have to see. And I, as you can see, I'm hovering the drow. I would like to make 
What I want to make is an Oathbreaker Paladin, but not an evil Oathbreaker Paladin. I really like the idea of exploring the nuance of the Oathbreaker, because, like, for me, it would be, like, somebody who decided after a while, they're like, you know, the, the squabbles of the gods or whatever is just, like, too... Farseal? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Fars Farseal, I think, is the word I'm looking for, but um, I could be saying it wrong. Um, just petty, you know? And that, like, they don't know uh, that she would no longer want to be involved in in this. Or that, like, you know, she sees all this suffering in the world around her and wonders, you know, what good they've done, you know? Um, and just, like, finds her faith fading you know, and slowly, eventually becomes an Oathbreaker. Um, but I don't think that's how that works. People have been trying to help me out with that, because who have had access to the early access. And I don't think it's going to work that way. Um, and I would do... Because it would be an e ugh, Yeah, I'll have to... I'm going to look around. I'm going to look around and we'll come back to this. I was, okay, so here's all the, here's all the classes. Uh, I do love me a good barbarian. I was looking at cleric also, and not bard. I don't enjoy bard. Druid was another option. Honestly, I'm super, that was one of my, besides the paladin, the druid of the circle of um, spores um, subclass was something I thought was a really cool idea. I like the idea of Monk. I don't know how well it'll play. Um, oh my gosh. I was like, where's that paladin? Okay, there it is. Okay, you got a stupid, stupid outfit. Oh no, we're clipping through. Apparently my graphics card isn't like the super duper bestest, but it's decent, it's fine. So, Paladin fulfill, fueled by the oath, you swore to uphold justice and righteousness. You are a beacon of hope in dark times. You get to lay on hands. And and I like Paladins because I really enjoy being a tank. I really, really like tank warrior classes. Um, but I also like healing. And so I'm like, wah! Like, I, like when I play like games like Overwatch, I play a lot of support. But when I play RPGs like this, I generally play a tank. Um, so this combines the best of both worlds. And I've never played one in actual D&D, so I'd like to give it a go, you know? Um, get advantage on attack rolls against Celestials, Fiends, and Undead. Use your blessed touch to heal a creature, cure it of all diseases, diseases and the poisons. But here's the thing, is I'm like, this is this is all well and good, but if I do become an Oathbreaker, which the way I've heard in this game, there's only, there's, well, there's three um, oaths. There's the Oath of Vengeance, there's the Oath of the Ancients, which is more nature-based, and then there's the Oath of Devotion. I do want to see, yes, you fight on the side of the light of the cosmic struggle against darkness to preserve the sanctity of life and the beauty, beauty of nature. So I think you really don't like the undead as an oath of the ancients. You're kind of like a druid paladin. So here's your oaths, right? You kindle the light through acts of kindness and kindle the light of hope in the bleakest hollows of despair. Shelter the light where love blooms. Stand against the devilry that would snip its stem. Preserve your own light. Delight in culture and small joys to preserve the light in your own heart. This, if I, pick, if I picked... A, a paladin class that I would stick with throughout the whole thing, I'd probably pick Oath of the Ancients. Oath of Devotion is boring, but that's kind of why I would like to do it, because I would like to become an Oathbreaker. But like a good Oathbreaker, and I've heard that the Oathbreaker Knight guy, like, who shows up to like, ask you, or I don't know, to like, tell you you're an Oathbreaker now, it like, he like, uh, he says that he broke his oath, because he had like an oath of like kingship or whatever it is, or like you swear your 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 faith is essentially bla based on like a like a leadership person, a king, queen, you know, emperor, whatever. But if you break your oath of fealty with that individual, you become an oath breaker. And this guy, he broke his oath in order to kill his king, who turns out was evil. 
but he became an Oathbreaker because of that. I'm also not a huge fan of the fact that, like, apparently if you want to, like, undo your Oathbreaker, like, ness which gives you a whole new set of abilities, all you have to do is pay, like, a thousand gold, and I, the other reason I really like the idea of the Oathbreaker Paladin is to, like, go through this, like, path of redemption, and, like, through your actions, maybe, like, maybe you... Um, either you, you know, maybe you go back to your god, or you like move, do, you, you, you have faith in something else, you know what I mean? Not even like a deity, but like maybe you have faith in like humanity, or you know, sent, I don't know, humanoids, <laughs> you know? Like you, you have faith in, in friends, you know, something, anime, <laughs> you know? But like, I don't, I think the game will not allow me that nuance that I want in order to really explore the Oathbreaker Pact. Following the ideal of the knight in shining armor, you act with honor and virtue to protect the weak. So your oath of devotion is courage, stride dauntlessly into action, compassion, show elementcy, or clemency, sorry, when prudent and lend your arm to those in need. Duty, tend to your responsibilities, as you obey just laws and support those entrusted to your care. This one would be the easiest one to break, I think. Oath of Vengeance, you have set aside even your own purity to right wrongs and deliver justice to those who have committed the most grievous sins. You fight the greater evil, exerting your wisdom, identify the higher morality in a given instance and fight for it. No mercy for the wicked, chasing those who dole out their villainy by wiping their blight from the world forever. This is probably the closest I can get to, oath to Oathbreaker without being an Oathbreaker. But I'm like, eh, because I don't want to be evil, I don't want to be mean. I, I really don't think, that I've heard that, like, when I was looking it up, because I wanted to, like, understand the nuances of it, like, you have to make choices in-game that go against your tenants. Like, the game keeps an invisible, like, tracker sheet of, like, you not going against your tenants, or you going against your tenants, you know? And once you do, once you reach a certain point, um, the guy shows up and, like, you're an oathbreaker, hello, you know? But I don't want to be a big meanie. And I was kind of hoping that, like, our oaths would, like, dedicate us to, like, a specific deity, and then I could, like, choose to go against that specific deity. But I don't think that's how it's gonna be. Here's all the backgrounds. We have Acolyte, which I can change, but Acolyte does make sense. As a paladin background, you spent your life in service to a temple, le learning sacred rites and providing sacrifices to the god or gods you worship. Serving the gods and discovering their sacred works will guide you to greatness. So we get the insight and religion skill checks uh, or skill proficiencies. Um, the other thing is I was thinking as a drow, if I was a Lilith drow, um, it would pretend because like you're up. I, I would think you were sworn to Lilith, right? As a paladin, you're a paladin of Lilith, you know, which would make you like an evil paladin, kind of. But if I went against her demands, then I could be an oath breaker, but I'd be breaking my oath to an evil god, and I could be a good person, but be an oath breaker still. But I again, I don't think I don't think it's gonna work out the way I want it to, and I'm sad about it. I'm torn between Sage and Acolyte. Both, I think, would would give me... I was gonna say, yeah, my primary ability... This is my primary ability as a Paladin is Strength. Honestly, well, the way I've been crafting my Paladin is as a Constitution individual because I want to be super tanky. I want to take the hits. Like, my own for d and I, I want to be able to, like, take hits and, like, put myself in harm's way for others. I don't necessarily want to hit super hard. <laughs> the thing about being Oath of the Ancients is that I think in order you could break your Oath of the Ancients by siding with the undead sometimes, um, because I think they really don't like the undead. But I was hoping when I got into the game I'd have a little more details on these, like in the character creator, but that does not does not appear to be the case here. But now that I'm done waffling, like not done done, but I, this is what I'm looking at right now. Um, I am going to edit my appearance. I'm so excited. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Oh my gosh, they are beautiful. Oh. Oh 
Freckles, oh my gosh, Freckles, that's so cute. Subby, if you're watching this, they have Freckles. <laughs> Skin tone, you can copy it, what? Oh my gosh, you can just, you could just be a drow, but not, but not gray blue-ish, grayish blue. Oh my gosh. Hey, I am exploring, don't you? Oh, I think we were, I think we were actually eight, yeah. Scars? Oh my gosh, you guys, maturity. Oh, sweet, I can be a little older? Oh my gosh, yes. No, we're gonna have a little bit of wrinkles. It's one thing you have to learn as you get older, is that you have to accept the fact that you get older. That your wrinkles and your silver hairs are a sign of the life you've led. You should take pride in that. Freckle quantity, you can <laughs> your freckle quantity. Freckle intensity, okay, okay. Vitiligo pigmentation, interesting. Uh, genitals, okay. Oh my gosh, we're not gonna like actually like see these, are we? Oh my gosh, I don't, I did, I did allow nudity, but I was not thinking we were actually gonna see like the genitalia or if it's just, um. Oh my gosh, I don't care. I'm gonna go with default. <laughs> I have a, I have a, I guess like a female body, so and I'm totally fine with the, with the genitalia that corresponds with the female sex. So I will keep that high, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna edit that out. I just like, I did not think you were gonna be totally naked, but I guess it's good to know what all my parts look like. So you guys don't get to see this. Now I'm a little worried though, if like, <laughs> I'm gonna have to like edit, like actually edit some stuff out. I'm used to uh, Bioware where they like, take they like tastefully hide the bits and parts, but Baldur's Gate's like, no nah, man, we out. So that's fine. That's good to know. Default is fine for me though, but that's not, I'm, I'm super glad they have that option. People can, people can play the game however they freaking want, you know? Um. Identity, oh my gosh, no way! They have the non-binary option? That's cool, that's super nice. That's super nice. Um, do I get to... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, and you can switch, right, right, right. Yes, okay. I was hoping we'd get some sliders Oh, uh, we don't. However, yes, I wanted a buff woman. <laughs> this is what I wanted. <laughs> I didn't want some frail tiny woman. Of course, she does not necessarily have to be frail because she's small. There's people that are half my size that could crack me in half. And I love that for them. Um, I was kind of hoping we'd get to... Like, mess with the faces. Like, you know, like change, like have sliders, like Dragon Age Inquisition, which is sort of the pinnacle of character creation for me, honestly. Um. Oh dang, like having them carved into you. Like having symbols carved into you, that's intense. I will admit I am a ba I'm a I'm a basic basic woman. I'm a big fan of the uh, the scar over the eye look. This is intriguing, but you would need a reason to back it up. And the thing I can think of is that as a Theladine drow, maybe at one point I was captured by Lilith drow and like had this carved onto my face. Um, usually this kind of design is um, painted. I've seen it on like Maori, Polynesian, um, but also like Native American. Like you have like, a, oh no, yeah. I think like Alaska natives. 
Yeah, they have like uh, under them, like under on the chin, like painted designs. I think it's really neat. Um, but I, I think I'm gonna go with the basic eye scar. Love it. Lichen tone. These are lichen, and this is dusk ash wisteria, amethyst, like a purple tinged drow. That's a cool one. I do, I do really like this dusk one. But the lichen one, I actually like a lot too. Oh, I cannot decide. I cannot decide. Mm, I think I'm gonna stick with the dusk tone. That feels kind of basic for the drow. But I think I'll stick with the dusk tone. Oh my gosh! And look, I'm a huge, I'm, I'm a sucker for the, for the white hair in anything. Look, my first love, my first animated love, was Kakashi from Naruto. All right, like that, that leaves an imprint on you. <laughs> and anytime there's a white-haired character, there's like a, there's like a 70% increased chance I'll be into them. Um, but I know it's basic again, but I'm I will see. But I think I'm gonna maybe stick with the white hair because especially I think it is like a drow thing too, right? Like your default is like a dark skinned drow with white hair, and I love that, love that for me, love that for us. <laughs> so let's see, make sure I got everything here. I did up the maturity a bit, the maturity. Um, oh, voice, let's see, where to next. Where to next? What is she Scottish? That's so funny. Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Oh. Be wary. This place is trapped. It's opened. I wonder what's back there. Why? In English, uh, yeah, I'm gonna compare everything to Inquisition. Um, you have. I mean, for them, they only let you have, like, the two, like, you know, like, if you were a female body type, you had female voice, right? I like that they give you the options here, and they give you the body type options, right? Um, for, like, different, like, sexes, but, like, however you want to play your gender is, like, up to you, right? Obviously. Um, and... In Inquisition, you had just, for, for both uh, male and female body type boy, uh, with the voices associated, they had um, like an American accent and a British accent for both. Um, and now I feel like both of these are all, like all of these are British-ish. One's just higher pitched. <laughs> More of those wretched things. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. You know, it's kind of leaning towards voice four, but the more I click on them, I think voice two has a bit more, um, like, inflection. I think I like it more. I think I like it more. Um. Yeah, body art! Wow! Yes! Okay, hang on. This is beautiful. This is lovely. This is horrifying. Oh, no, I thought it was, like, mind flare stuff. It's just a cute little octopus, I think. Mm. Ooh, that's cool. Oh my gosh, you guys. Is this like, like Inquisition where I can like turn down the shine on the skin, but I don't think you can. <laughs> oh, I love extra eye makeup -y stuff. And I am a paladin. I don't know, I feel like this would be like a good thing for a paladin. Like a, like a holy eye type thing. Barbian type thing. Oh my gosh. Could you this 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 would be very cheesy, I think, for a tiefling. But like totally like maybe you should like lean into it. Like nobody likes tieflings or whatever, you know? Um like that's like the racial stereotype, right? Is that like nobody likes them because they're demon spawn. Um But like lean into it, right? And like have this going. Of course, to be fair, if you're a tiefling, I think you have a variety of horn shapes, so this is cool. What did, did we have? Flaring so oh my gosh, it's a sword. Okay, that's cool. That's super cool. Switchback trail. Okay, yeah, this is that like yeah, okay. It's like like chin tattoo. This looks like the Inquisition tattoo kind of that I got. I got the mythal, one of the mythal ones, Caldera. That looks more like a oh, it's like a like a brand. Yeah, okay. Shriek mask. The thing is, is I know that this game reacts to a lot of things, and I'm curious if they would even react to my tattoos. I feel like tattoos have, or like face paint or whatever, um, is, 
you would have to have a very specific reason for having it, which is why I really liked the Valisleen, the, the, the elf, the Dalish elf tattoos, is that, like, each one was dedicated to a particular god, and when I was making my character, um, they don't, they don't say that? I don't think they say that. No, they don't. And you're just like, oh, you just pick one that's pretty, you know, but when, like, I finally played the game, and, like, I realized what they meant when I made my second character much later, I researched. I, like, thoroughly researched which ones I wanted my, my particular elf, because the tattoo on your face meant that you were dedicated to that god. Um... So I thoroughly researched that, you know, because it, like, no, nothing in game made sense. Like, nothing in game reacted to that, but, like, it made, like, narrative sense to me, like, internal sense to me to, like, have a reason for that. Luckily, the way that my first character's uh, tattoo worked out, worked out well. Mythal would have been a goddess, like, she's a protector goddess, and that's what my character was, was she was more of a protector. So it worked out by, like, you know, thank the gods, you know, thank, <laughs> you know, thank Mythal, but, like, uh... It, uh, yeah, I feel like in any game you should have like a, a reason to either paint or you know carve onto your face something that means something, you know? So I hesitate just throwing something on. Oh my gosh, this one looks like the Mythal tattoo. It actually kind of looks like the Andril tattoo too. This one looks like one of the Elgarnan tattoos. Neck tattoos are cool. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they at least gave us names, but now I'm like, what am I putting on my face, you know? Oh my gosh, is this like flames coming up your neck and then like having like a third eye type one? If I could ever see my neck, maybe if I was playing a bard. That's cool though. Having like ancient script tattooed onto your face? That's sick. Because I do, I kind of want to play into like... I want to be like a, a, and I know Paladin does have like a fairly high charisma, um, but I really want to play into like the, the like intelligence. Is it? And I know Paladins are generally more wisdom, but like I really, and that's why I was I'm torn on like the sage background because I want her to be like she loves reading. Like I really like the idea of warriors who are scholars as well. Um, and like to be fair, if you're both, you can't like super dedicate yourself to one or the other. So you'll be like a little. You won't be like as great as like a wizard maybe on like the scholarly pursuits and you won't be as like specialized as the fighter, you know, in like being super duper, you know, cool with your weapons or whatever. But um, I like, I like the idea of being more of a generalist. Oh, this one's cool. That one definitely makes you look tattoo 30. Oh, okay. Now these are not having names. Okay. Interesting. Pouring hate? <laughs> okay, okay, calm down there, Gerard Butler. Oh, this is cute. Batman? Ooh, I do like this. I think it looks like a sword. That's cool. Oh, I love the way it's like faded a bit at the top. I really like, and you can see like the clear finger, like streaks. <gasps> That's definitely Maori, isn't it? With like the super intricate line work, like the detailed line work. Or maybe not Maori too, I think I saw it too. I see, I've seen um, examples of, um, not necessarily the tattooing, but it, when I was went to the Bishop Museum in Hawaii, um, in Honolulu, they had really beautiful renditions of showcasing how, like, the tattoos matched um, a lot of, like, the line work for tattoos matched the line work on a lot of, like, bast basketry and pottery. They were dotted. Um, like dotted lines just like like on the pottery just like how they do the tattoos um, with like dotted with like little tiny dots that almost look like lines but you could if you look closely you can see their dots um, and and so they got some really detailed intricate line work and you can see it in Native American like rock art like in the United States um, at least in the West so that's where I've worked um, so that's the only thing I can speak to have any tiny bit of credibility and knowing anything about. Again, in real life, I'm a generalist. I don't specialize in anything in particular. Um, but a lot of the art, well, the rock art, the, the, the artwork on the rock um, will parallel designs um, written or done in, uh, what is it called? Fabric? Not fabric. Um, 
uh, textiles, textiles, um, which are things like cloth, flat, fibrous, you know, type things, um, and uh, pottery, bas uh, and basketry too. Um, so you'll see a lot of those patterns repeated, and you can actually, there's some rock art that you can see, like the clothing designs, like generally it's a bit vague, well, not generally, certain styles are a bit vague, or like they don't really seem to have clothes on them at all, but some of them that they attribute to more female type individuals have like these uh, wraparound, uh, like aprons or skirt type things um, that, cover, that go from the waist down to like the knee. And you'll see like repeating patterns in that and you'll see them in other like more intricate figures that have like patterns on them you can actually see it in what's left of like textile work and in what's like what we have of like pottery you know um so the patterns repeat um and are used you know on a variety of things like whether or not they had like you know ascribed meaning in all of them or they you know were just like this is a really beautiful design that also incorporates some meaning maybe you know so, again, I'm not a super expert. Please don't come to me for like, you know, cold hard facts on things. I just have a generalist knowledge on many things. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. The vine work. So, so many of these honestly look like the Valaslein from Dragon Age Inquisition, and I really like it. Like, I think there's only, you know, it's not like, I'm like, oh, they're copying. It's that, like, you know, that, again, there's a pattern to like, tattoos <laughs> you know so oh this is stunning this to me looks like something that like somebody who's seen into the beyond would have tattoos into their face like or, like if you've seen into the void and it leaks you know like it's a representation of it like leaking out of your eye almost you know or it would be really really good for somebody who just had a freaking mind worm stuck into their eye and it's like you feel this like you, you it's like a representation of what you feel is like potentially like leaking out your eye in like an artistic style like this this void leaking out of you Oof. but to be fair like i don't think I've, the character really hasn't had the time to like <laughs> she's like i just got that thing stuck in my eye now i'm gonna go get a tattoo <laughs> You know, I could also say that this is her oath tattooed onto her face. I don't know what language this is. I don't think it's, I don't know if it's any particular language. It could be like her oath tattooed onto her face or a promise of some sort. There's so many good ones. I'm curious if you can change stuff at some point. I feel like there is a way to change like your look a little bit, or maybe at least your tattoos. Um, but this is the one that I can ascribe the most meaning to at this time, so I think I'll stick with this for now. Where it's like, I'm gonna say anyway that it's her oath tattooed onto her face. Oh, the color. Oh my gosh, we can change the color. A design for paladins that my sister and I were looking at um, was these. There was this beautiful, some beautiful artwork. Uh, oh no, it was Asmar too, where it was a beautiful, uh, like black and gold kind of style, where the individual was was a black individual, like several of them. Like that, we ended up kind of going down this rabbit hole, and like in order to have like this, like really beautiful like I've usually seen like like you know like black and white you know like black like with like silver eyes and silver hair but these individuals had, were black with like gold eyes like like solid gold eyes you know and like you know gold auras you know and I was like for like an ASMR design and I was like that's beautiful beautiful and my default already has like more of a silver eye which I noticed the Lilith um drow are supposed to have red eyes. That's a, that's a gift from Lilith. So this is gorgeous, and I turned down the intensity a bit because it's like, Bleh. like that looks, I mean, it looks cool, but it almost looks, it does look kind of fake. It looks magic almost, but that's, that's also cool. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's like, I can't decide. I can't decide. Oh, but like a violet, like a lavender. These are good. These are all very good. Ooh, we could get like... This is a little bit more subtle, maybe. P 
piercings. Lapis stud buffing. <laughs> Subduer loops. Interesting. Midnight tears. Uh, dark. Love it. No, are those raven skulls? Listen, I might have to get raven skulls. I love raven skull earrings. I have a pair that I am actually eyeing currently in real life. Ooh, oh, I love that look. That would be a good Lilith look. Oh my gosh, with the with the eyebrow piercing too. Chultin serpents. That's um. Isn't that a that's an island in D and D, where like the dinosaurs are? It's like a jungle. Oh my gosh, I'm also eyeing a pair of like freaking dagger earrings. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Fangs, epic. Oh, and I was like, Minotaur ring, I'm looking at like the sides. Dude. <laughs> Easy breezy little skulls. Arch face whirls, okay, okay. Commoner ring, bard rings, uh huh, okay. I, I, I'm gonna have to go with the with the raven skull earrings, which works too if I'm like sort of a druid paladin kind of the, with the oath of the ancients. I'm not a hundred percent sure on this. If I go, we'll have to see what my eye and hair color does. Um, because I I do like to kind of stick to like a color scheme. And so the gold might just be a bit, like, detract a bit from, like, the white and the silver eyes. But we'll have to see what we do. Heterochromia is... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, the double eye. Or, like, they do two different eye colors. All like... Whoa. No, okay. Give me... I mean, this is great. I'm glad we have all these. But I'm going to stick with this for now. I think these are the natural eye colors for drow. Ooh, that one's got like. Where's that? I am. These are almost like spookier, but I, I really. This one almost makes her look like. Kinder? I don't know. Her eyes look almost more real? I don't know. It's weird. Like, I, I don't know how to say it. I won't do the red. I do love red though. I like, I love the red eyes. I could. <sighs> no, that's cheating. I can't be, I, I can be, but if I'm, if I'm not a Lilith Drow, I don't know if I get to keep, if I get to have red eyes. Even if I could say, I was a Lilith Drow once and then I became not a Lilith Drow. This is supposed to be the Lilith's blessing, is gives them red eyes. But I do, gall, should I do red eyes? My Inquisition character, whom I love and adore, um, her name is Erica. She was, you know, kind of the stereotypical elf, very pale, very petite. Um, but she had the like white blonde hair and red, bright red eyes, bright, bright red eyes. And I had, I gave her like a blood red Vaseline tattoo that like arced on her face, like a tree kind of almost. Um, and I love that look. I love that very, very much. But my next character that I made in Inquisition, well, mm, well, the next one that I uploaded, the next one that I made, like a second season of Dragon Age Inquisition before on YouTube, had, what did he have? He had kind of gray hair, I think. He was mostly, he was shaved, like, really close to the, to the skull. Um, but uh, he had silver eyes, and I really really loved that look too and he was the he was much tanner than Erica was you know what I think I think the dark eye like the black here on the eyes actually helps the gold work a lot better
Like, if I went with the red eyes, I think I have to get a red tattoo. Just for aesthetic. I don't generally do... Well... I'm not a big fan of makeup on myself in real life. I never wear it, in fact. But in video games, I find it essential to have some sort of eyeliner going on. Um, because oftentimes, at least in older games, I think they're getting better at it now, but I used to feel like if you didn't put eyeliner on, it made your character's eyes kind of disappear. Like, they, they didn't pop very well. But the eyeliner um, in-game helped give their eyes a bit more definition, and so they popped a little bit more. It was easier to see. And I absolutely don't change the color. I always leave it black. I don't do anything fancy with it. I just my personal preference is to leave it black. Honestly, not, not a lot of eye makeup styles. Yeah, see, because this is what happens. <laughs> I think it once once you take it off black and put it into a different color, it uh just makes it really, really obvious. Although, to be fair, I guess if you turned it down a little, I don't know, it just makes it look very painted on to me. Um, but I'm not, I don't wear makeup in real life, so maybe if I was better at makeup. A metallic tint. Oh, see, that's nice. I don't mind that. It makes it, like, darker. go with a dark blue. I'm like, I don't change it, and then I'm like, promptly changes it. I do like the metallic glint, too, honestly, a lot. Oh, you get, okay, okay, I see you. Now it's super shiny. So I, I'm just going back on everything I'm saying, ever. Oh, the gray is nice. I like the gray. I like that a lot. Okay, that's the that's the ultimate shining gloss. Look at that. Oh my gosh, do I like that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just eating all my words. Dude, you guys, look at that. I picked gold, because I was like, oh yeah, I was gonna look at the gold eyes. Uh, but it turns the sclera black. I did not, or did I do that? I don't know. Okay. Maybe these are the white ones. The white eyes up here, like the white sclera, and then the further, oh no. Okay, that's confusing. That's confusing. Oh no. <laughs> elf silver. Elf summer, elf spring. Red, blue. Oh, I was like demonic, emerald. Okay, I was why why are these ones called elf? I was gonna say, oh, if they have ones that are like Oh, maybe. Nope. Okay, I was like, maybe they kind of have ones that are like associated with each like race, like your general eye color that you generally get. I do love that. And this helps bring the paint in, but I think the white still looks good, but we can we can still definitely <gasps> those freaking silver eyes or gray eyes with the black sclera, that's awesome. I think I really like this. I like this for now. We'll see. I'm still playing around, I'm still looking around. Hair. Oh, I'm so excited for the hair. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is actually a, such a good look. I really do like this a lot. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I am so excited for the hair. The hair has just been getting better and better in games. Oh my gosh. Okay, hang on. Okay. 
We don't get like a nice, oh my gosh, look at this. She's so lovely. Listen, also all it takes is for you to have like a buzz cut like this, this look, so good. I am very biased because I have the, uh, not this particular exact one. I'll see if I can find what mine looks like in this. Ponytail, this is, like, this is what I would usually do. I do love the ponytail look. This is definitely a halfling hairstyle. <laughs> Gnome. <laughs> this look, this look. Very <gasps> oh my gosh, the tattoo goes back like that. Oh my gosh, and the tattoo comes back in the back. Oh my gosh, that's such a good look. That's such a cool look. Oh my gosh. I look at this, look at this. Oh my gosh, I didn't even, how did I not? I didn't even notice it when she was bald. I was looking at the other side. Oh my gosh. I love that they did that. They didn't like just stop it at the hairline. Like they took into account that you'll probably be able to see the tattoo under the scalp. Oh, or not under the scalp. That's creepy. Okay, I love this. I love this. Classic. This is a classic look. I've seen this in every Bioware game ever. This is a choice. This is a choice. <laughs> no. This is, this is, I think this is exactly from Skyrim. I'm pretty sure this exact hairstyle is in Skyrim. I honestly don't mind. Like, these are like hom homages, 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 homages. I guess so far, this is the one closest to my real hairstyle, except my hair is brown. And my hair goes all the way down. It's like a giant mohawk. Um, and this side is like shaved, like right here, like this. But this is all long hair. I'm generally not a huge fan of having hair down in long games because uh, hair down in real life bothers me, like for myself. Like, I really don't like the look. Or I don't, not, I love the look. Um, this bothers me, having hair in my face. And it also bothers me on like a, um, what you call like a practical level like because I generally play like tanks or stuff and even if you're playing like a wizard or a sorceress or whatever like your hair's gonna get in your face when you're fighting or someone's gonna pull on it like ooh I like this and they have like longish hair look at this this is what the technology should be used for in video games making beautiful long hair This is cute. I really, really like. <gasps> this is kind of what. Except I don't have dreads either. But this is kind of what my hair looks like. It's like long, like this. Yeah, and it's not as poofy. Not nearly as. Not dreads. <laughs> I, obviously, if I'm white, I can't do dreads. That's just not something I can do. But I like. I like this look a lot. Super biased. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. I like it. I like the hair that like is like big. Cause you don't get that. Like, I don't know, in like older games, like you don't generally have like well especially like, you know, like the afro like afro styles like this, you know, like You don't get that in game like older games. And so it's just nice to see, but you also don't get like, you don't get like super long hair, you know? Like you don't get, you know, anything with any sort of volume, really. Ooh, I like this one. I like this one a lot. I know, I just am super, you can't, <laughs> shaved on the side? I'm like, hell yeah, I love that for us. Ooh, nice. So I was noticing, like, in this, in the white hair, like, we've got, like, this, like, streak of other color, and it's been, like, throughout, like, in, yeah, kind of, like, you know, like, laced throughout, which I like. It gives it, like, a bit more shape to it. It's not just, like, not just, like, totally white, but in this one, it kind of brings it all together into, like, one, like, like, this is actually where a lot of people start, a like, not aging, <laughs> graying. They start graying here at the temples. So it's an interesting, like, reversal of that. <gasps> oh, 
Oh, this is a good one. This is good. I love the dreads in this. It's not like big, but it is unique. The hair keeps kind of fading, like the side keeps kind of like coming in and out, it looks like. There is this one too, which I really do like. Oh, I'm torn. I'm so torn. Hopefully we can change our hair periodically throughout the game. That would be nice. It's nice that the hair isn't like clipping too bad into the body. Being as long as it is. Oh, I do like that braid. But oh, I'm torn. Yeah, I'm torn on the Knave Braid and the Inkeep Braid, but I think I'm going to go with the Knave Braid for now. Oh dang, I was just curious, I was going to see what the facial hair options were, but uh, I think as a drow or an elven type individual, you don't get facial hair. Interesting. Okay, I totally forgot, we gotta look at, uh, there's flies in this room, uh, gotta look at hair color, because I'm like, I love the way it looks already. Uh, graying intensity, okay. So you just lose like a little bit of the highlights. Um, I think, uh, what is, uh, oh shoot, I don't even know. Dang it, the graying, okay. I don't know what I put the graying in, oh no. Or what the graying was in originally. It's okay, the graying's at zero, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I gotta remember, gray zero, brown two. Okay. Mm, yeah, nope, uh-uh. The pink, I do, uh, don't give, I, I know that there's like all those jokes about like the women with like the buzz shaved, like buzz sides and like the pink hair, you got the arcane violet, yeah, and uh, Zarya and Overwatch, and yeah, it's a thing, but uh, it looks good. Listen, it looks good. Brown, auburn, dusty. I do actually like the dusty. It was gray. <gasps> what was it? It was gray zero? Okay, down here. We were gray. The dusty is nice. Ash blonde. Sometimes in games, I, I even though I like white-haired characters, like like making them too, um, I'll go with like a like a blondish, like a light blonde, uh, because sometimes white is just like like it's too much. It's too white. It's just. But I think part of the problem with like white hair as like a concept is that like if you don't put the highlights in like they've done in here, that's what it does. It makes it like just too bright. Um, because like even your highlights, if you have white hair, like your highlights maybe be gray or something, or you have gray hair with like white highlights, you know, something to kind of like give it a bit of texture, kind of. Otherwise, it's just like ah, it's just a beacon and it's painful. I am not gonna lie, I am loving this. I'm loving this, but then I have to change her eye color and her tattoo color, and I just I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. This is ginger. This looks more like auburn. Is auburn kind of? British? I think it is. Oh man, uh -huh, I'm changing. These are all things I don't know, apparently. Green? I do. I, I love the greens. And the blues. <gasps> the purples. The purples are so nice. I generally go with more like realistic hair colors. The wildest I get is white. But I kind of like this dusty look, and we but we were, so we have, that was our original, a gray zero. We could even do like a darker gray, which I do like also. So we have like dark grays, the dusty, and the highlights, all highlight colors. So this is like your basics, but I could do what I said, right, where the highlights are white, or even a gray. Gray white. 
All right, so I did the dusty and I zoomed out and I was like, hmm, I don't know, like I like it, but I don't know if it's my favorite. I am, we were starting out at gray one, or gray zero originally. I'm kind of liking the darker gray, just like a slightly darker gray with the white highlights still. A gray white, right, so it's not like super white. Oh yes, I think this is all coming together. Oh my gosh, I love her. I love her. You guys, I'm in, I'm falling in love. That's the whole point. You're supposed to fall in love with your own character. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I think I have got her. The thing is now is I, oh my gosh. I am very concerned. Do I click proceed if proceeding will? Okay, I was like, no, no. I was like, I could proceed I think might be like going into the game and I am not 100% ready for that. So this is what she looks like from a distance. I think the starting outfit looks very silly. It's a little dingus outfit. Um, but okay, uh, so we have Celadine Draw right now, level 1 Paladin, Charisma's pretty high, dang, my intelligence and my wisdom are poopy. I thought wisdom, I thought Paladins had, I guess they're like, Charisma, no, they're like Charisma and Wisdom based. I think I get to add some points to her. I mean, you get two. You can add a, you, you can add a two to one stat and a one to another stat. Um, but I don't want her to be like a stupid. I don't know, like a stupid. I want her to be a scholar warrior. I guess I could. Or no, I think your background. Sorry, right, your background gives you skills or skill checks or whatever you want to call it. So I get athletics, religion, insight, perception, intimidation, or, but that's like also with the paladin, but then with the sage background, instead of acolyte, I get athletics, arcana, history, perception, intimidation. I think I actually want to go with that one. I realize acolytes may be like, but I'm not going to be a min-maxer either. Let's get that out of the way. Not going to be a min-maxer. I want to play this character how I want to play it. Um, if it's not, like, I'm not gonna min-max everybody. I'm gonna play what I think is cool, you know? I do get to the point sometimes where I like to try to min-max things, but also, am I gonna try to brute force this character into how I think it should be? Yes, I am. <laughs> with the others in my party, though, who I think are gonna come with, like, their own, like, they, yeah, they come with their own stuff in, uh, what you call it, in Divinity 2, you could, uh, change everybody up. Make them into whatever you wanted, but I think in... Baldur's Gate 3, we're gonna keep them, which makes sense, like, they're gonna be, um, in their own, like, specific classes and stuff. I think I'm gonna go with the Sage background. For the Paladin, I get simple weapons, martial weapons, rapiers, short sword, well, and that's also my racial, I think, the rapiers, short swords, and hand crossbows. Armor, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor, shields. I do like shields. I do really like shields. Oh, abilities. I haven't even gone into that yet. Oath of the Ancients. Oh, I just, I'm still, I'm still, dang, I'm still thinking about that. Okay, so you get a proficiency bonus. This is my plus two. Can I move that? I can move that. Okay, so I could be a beefy paladin instead of a strength. Listen, I might be totally ruining everything, but honestly, I would love to. Okay, sweet. I would love to dump stat dexterity. I realize. I realize some people don't like that. Again, if you're gonna be picky about it, this is not the series for you. <laughs> but, uh, um, 
like I said, I kind of just want to take the hits. Part of, I know part of being like a warrior class is often like being able to dodge the hits, but I don't mind taking the hits as long as they have the constitution for it. But I don't want to take away from charisma because um, not only is a paladin a charisma caster, um, I, in RPGs, I always want my charisma up. I always want to be able to like talk my way in and out of things, you know? Well, to me, Sage would give me a good option for, instead of like having been raised like, you know, in a temple my whole life or whatever, um, a Sage is somebody who seeks out a variety of knowledge. And so with the Arcana in history, she could potentially like look back, you know, be looking back in time and realizing that a lot of like the squabbles and the things that have affected all the races came from the gods like having their little squabbles you know like god squabbles that like spill out into the rest of everybody else's problems um but i don't think i feel like the gods are not going to be as prevalent in this because we don't get to pick a specific deity that we're putting our oath on i'm curious how the uh cleric works then too because at least, the, I think the Shadowheart girl, the sh the cleric in here, she's actually like an evil cleric. And she is dedicated to a particular god. Of like secrets and darkness. And Dementia Raven Way. <laughs> but again, if I pick Oath of the Ancients, that's the one that I'm most likely to stick with as a paladin because, like, it's more of a nature-based one, you know, and it's more about, like, being, like, being not good because, like, out of goodness's sake, but, like, more of a freer, like, less didactic sense of good, you know? That, like, the natural order of thing, things often includes things like, you know, death, destruction, entropy. But, um, I think it's getting, the, especially the undead is something they don't like because it gets in the way of, like, the natural cycle of things. Um, so I could be making, like, 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 allowing things from, like, necromancers and undead type things, um, but, um, and that would get me in trouble. So I think, because that not also if it's like less, like I have to be like totally evil, you know? Whereas Oath of Devotion, if I was sworn, which this outfit looks much better than this one. I do not like, I do not like this green and gold look. Um, maybe if this was like black or silver or done almost anything else <laughs> besides the green. I don't like it. Oath of Vengeance is sick. I'm like, I just picked based off like the starting armor color. Um, but yeah, if I was sworn to a particular god and then decided to leave their service, that's the kind of the nuance I'm looking for, whereas I don't think I'm gonna get that. But Oath of the Ancients gets a 5 healing, heal yourself and all nearby allies for 5 hit points, regain another 5 hit points the next round. Oh, that's nice. So I think I'm gonna stick with this. Oh, before I forget, I want to say thank you. I want to make sure to say thank you to my friend Trevor, who gave me the code for this. I don't think Trevor watches my videos, but thank you so much, Trevor, for giving me the code for the game. Uh, he had an extra one. Uh, he bought a version that like gave him an extra code, um, and so this is the this is the deluxe edition uh, code that I got, and I'm super excited, super happy. I wanted to play it on the third. I actually took the fourth off, which is today that I'm recording, um, so then I can play the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. <laughs> um, so I'm one of those people that got to be lucky enough to do that. But I was planning on playing, starting playing the afternoon of the third. However, we couldn't get the game to download. Um, like I, I had to leave for work before I could start the download. And then uh, my friend was trying to do it remotely and we couldn't get it to work. And so then I get to the hotel and I have to start downloading it and it took from 4 o'clock until 12.15 a.m. I checked the time this morning because I went to bed because I was tired and I was sad and I was like, if I go to sleep, tomorrow will be here sooner and I can play. So I started playing at around 7 a.m. today. <laughs> um, but I'm just, I'm so incredibly excited. I almost wonder if I'm like shooting myself in the foot with this. 
as far as I know, you can play the game how you want. Like, you don't have to min-max. They're leaving it very open. Like, they don't even lock you into the racial stats, right? So, like, the old racial stats. So you don't have to, um... You don't have to, like, pick a race that, like, fits your class. You know what I mean? Uh, you can play it however you want. So I'm hoping... I'm hoping that that, that works. If not, I'm kind of hoping that they're... There's a way in game to like change your stats, maybe, but <laughs> we'll see. I'm gonna go with it and uh, I'm gonna play the game my way and see how it goes. I'm so nervous. Uh, I'm actually, this morning I was like staring at my computer and I was like, I almost didn't, I was like standing there and I was like, I'm so nervous to start after being so excited and not being able to play last night, but. Oh my name, I didn't even think. I do have a name picked out for when Dragon Age Dreadwolf eventually comes out. Um. And that name is based on a friend who's passed away recently, fairly recently. Uh, he was a big fan, I think, was of Dragon Age and Bioware stuff in general. So because he didn't get the chance to play Dreadwolf, I'm going to be using a, a part of his name as my character's name in Inquisition, or sorry, in Dreadwolf. But for this, I didn't even I didn't even consider names. Oh my gosh! Now I have to spend 20 more minutes looking up names. Oh, also, in my head, one of the reasons that she would be an Oathbreaker, or not Oathbreaker, <laughs> well, maybe an Oathbreaker, um, a nature paladin, like an Oath of the Ancients paladin, is because, like, I know she's a Celadine draw, or Cel Cel Celdarine, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. I'm just like, I have like the first couple letters and the last couple letters. Celdarine draw. Um, what is Celdarine about? I looked it up before, but let me double check. Saldarine is elvish for Fellowship of Brothers and Sisters of the Wood. Okay, so that works for Oath of the Ancients. Was the elven pantheon of gods that resided on the astral dominion of Arvidar under the leadership of Corell and Larathir. So it's... Oh, it's not a deity. It is many deities. Oh! Interesting. For worship, each member of the Seldarine was represented by both male and female forms. This is the Forgotten Realm, Realms wiki. Um, there's, for example, in Cormanthor, there were statues of the Seldarine in either both their male and female forms or in a single androgynous form. Some gods even have more than three forms, including non-humanoid forms. In fact, the elves found the human obsession with biological sex and gender roles to be limiting and not befitting of a deity who was beyond mortal definitions. All gods were to be respected, not squeezed into a role that presented them as little more than powerful versions of mortals, or at best, at best, or spoiled children at worst. Interesting. So they're calling out, um... They are calling out, like, essentially, like, the Greek gods, too. I mean, to be fair, I've also been looking at the Mesopotamian ones, and, like, the Great Flood that happened... It, like like mythologically in uh, Mesopotamia was because the dad god was like the humans are too loud they're too noisy we're gonna kill them all and it was only like oh, I can't remember who it was but one of the other gods was like hiding a few of them like no let's not do that because they get their get all their worship from humans you know and anyways fat the mythology stuff is fascinating but apparently that whole thing with the elves not liking the way humans are like super gender bound comes from Stephen E. Shind and Kevin Melka in 1998 in Coranthir, Empire of the Elves. So I haven't read stuff like that, to be fair. Um, I am currently reading, or I am, it's it's in my list, it's on my, it's in my audiobook, and I did start, I, I did start listening to it, it was Elric of Melnibane, which is apparently maybe kind of an inspiration for Dritzt, and I do know of Dritzt, and he's also on my reading list. Um, but I never liked the way, let's do this too, I guess, I never liked the way the drow were portrayed as like, they were born evil. It's like, if you are raised in an evil doing environment, you will potentially be more, you will be more inclined to that because that's all you know. But like, people aren't born evil. No one's born evil. Like, no like, humanoid entity is born evil, you know, um, in general. Um, or it's very, very rare, like not a whole race, especially, and as has been tirelessly pointed out the dark-skinned people <laughs> they're not born evil the half orcs have the same problem um you know like orcs in general um that uh, they say that's because of like the influence of the gods that they're under like the was a groom not groomish he's like a god of forgery or something uh, but the orc god uh is like evil right and so he makes his followers evil and lilith is evil she makes her followers evil 
So like I get that, there is that, but it does seem kind of, it does seem kind of odd, right? That like, it's only the dark skinned ones that are evil. It's like, hmm. So I have really liked that they're opening this up in this one. Um, Cause I was hardcore gonna go in as a drow if they were gonna make them like, they're born evil, which I didn't think they would in this day and age. But I was gonna be like, I'm gonna be the nicest drow on the planet, you know? Anyway. One of the reasons I think of the ancient circle, and back to that, is good, is because even if you were not raised under Lilith and like her influences, you would still have that like, what do you call, like, ethnic scar, group scar of some sort. Um, something similar is brought up with like Jewish people, where like they have like the generational scar of like the holocaust and like you know all the like displacement that they've had you know that stuff affects those groups of people you know um generationally um and so i feel like that would be something kind of like what with the drow is that even if they weren't raised under lilith they would have that memory they would know like they left for a reason and that would be in their lore you know um and so i feel like for her it's something where it's like she values this this world, not just the upper world, like there's there's value to be had in the Underdark as well, obviously. Like there's beautiful like fungi and crystal gardens, you know, it's, it could be a super beautiful place, um, but full of dangers, you know? But I think that's how the upper world is too, a beautiful place full of dangers, you know? Um, so I think she appreciates that balance uh, between like light and dark, you know? the natural balance, I, I don't even think things are not necessarily in a spectrum, but more of a cycle, you know? Where everything eventually returns to the ground, you know? That's the natural cycle of things, so it's not something to be feared, it's just how things go. So, anyway, that's me being esoteric, and now I'm gonna look up some names, ha ha ha. I have been calling her Lilith, and it's Loth, it's Loth, I'm so sorry. Lilith is somebody else entirely, but the name is intentionally similar. I know it is. You can't convince me otherwise. Oh my gosh. I don't know if this is true, but the Wikipedia... I'm just scrolling the internet. Um, I, one of the options was, what is the origin of the word drow? So I clicked it. The word drow is of Scottish origin, an alternate form of trow, which is a cognate for troll. Troll, trow, drow was used to refer to a wide variety of evil sprites. Except for the basic concept of dark elves, everything else about drow was apparently invented by TSR's writers. What? I mean, the dark elves exist in Nordic mythology. So... And like, but it's kind of, sometimes it's like, are they dwarves? Are they dark elves? Like, it's complicated. Our sources aren't great on um, what was mostly an oral history that was then written down centuries later by Christian monks. Um... <laughs> I was actually curious about this. The other question is, are female drow stronger? They are shorter than many other sub-races of elves, and while there's no average height difference between male and female drow, females on average are bigger and stronger than males. That would make sense to me if... Oh, also, this was the other reason people didn't like the fact that the drow, I remember now, they didn't like the drow were, like, born evil, because it was a ma more of a matriarchal, I think, it was more of a matriarchal thing, like, Lilith being a woman, like, doesn't necessarily make, like, your whole group, you know, matriarchal if you worship a female deity, you know, um, but... Um, I think it does a, because she's spider, right, she's like a spider goddess type thing with her webs and all that, um female spiders tend to be bigger and stronger than male spiders. Um, so I was curious if that was, so that's another thing, right? Where it's like, oh, of course the matriarchal dark-skinned people are evil. It's like, hey, that was, what is wrong with you? Like, who does, who thought that was? I know the creators made it back in the day, but still, like, doesn't mean you were without a conscience. It wasn't like the 1800s. Like, geez, this was like the 1960s. Which still, you know, I get it. Uh, but this only justifies the the idea that may, and this again, this is like some of this is from like Wikipedia's, some of this is from, I don't know exactly what Baldur's Gate lore is on this, but this was like one of this was from like World Anvil, some of this was from just Wikipedia, um, and the fact that they're like Drow is a, an alternate form of Trow, which is a troll, and it's like what, 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 come on, you know. 
Okay, I just found a list on Reddit. Thank the heavens for Reddit. Thank the Seldorin for Reddit, because that's where real people live um, on the internet. But this is a drowned name table from Dragon Magazine issue 267 from January 2000 with a helpful table for drow name elements and their meanings, both for first names and house names. And it looks like um, it is actually, like, the example they use is, according to this, Minthara, for example, means essentially lesser rune, and if she were a dude, her name would be Rantar. That apparently, the, the distinction, at least according to this like magazine and some of the lore, the distinction between male and female is uh, fairly important. But again, that wiki article we read was that elves in general were like, you know, weirded out by like the male-female distinction that like people that humans were so obsessed with. But potentially, again, if you have like a Lilith, you know, Lilith, Lolth, um, like the matriarchal thing, like evil matriarch or whatever, um, with the with the females tending to be bigger than the males, um, it could I could see there being like a like a distinction there where they would actually care a little bit more at least about like female versus male. Um, but again, you can play however you freaking want. Even the person who made this was like you can like. You know, generally they do care about, it seems like they care about the distinction between male and female name, but like, you play how you want, you know? And when was this? This was posted two days ago in our Baldur's Gate. In the Baldur's Gate subreddit, or Baldur's Gate 3 subreddit, sorry. Um, I am going to save this. Oh, but the example they use is that it apparently seems like, um... Uh, what is this example? They were somebody was wondering if Larian knew knows about this with naming the drow. Um, Minthara is on the list. Min meaning lesser, minor, second. Glyph and Thara meaning glyph, marker, rune. Um, there's definitely connections to be drawn from her character to these as to these meanings, which I don't know anything about that, but uh, I believe it. <laughs> Um, or at least I'm inclined to believe it, but the person who posted it said, yeah, I used her name as an example as well. I'm absolutely certain they do. Every single canonical drow's character name that they can think of can be translated from that list. So, oh, I love finding, like, actual, like, name meaning. Not just, like, random name generator, like, lists of names. I want to know the meaning of a name before I give it to the individual. Okay, I'm showing you guys my progress on names. It's been a while. <laughs> I've been sitting here typing things out. These are the prefixes and suffixes according to the document that I found, which I will list in the comments. Um, or sorry, not in the comments, in the description. Um, I think it's very handy. Um, but these are the sub prefix meaning, suffix meaning, and then my combos that I've done. And I've kind of done them all in my head. Like I've kind of like sounded them out, you know, in my head and everything. Um, but these are the ones that I was like, ooh, I really, I like the, I like the idea of that name, like the combo, you know? Um, and I put her up here because, uh, my name is up there. I'll, for It's like, oh, look, you can look at her while you're trying to name her. No, my, I was like, I hadn't done that. And then I was like, my name's up here, even though I want to show people this screen. So hopefully there's not my name anywhere else. <laughs> but, um, so I'm super creative and I put her up here. Yay! <laughs> For the dual purpose of helping me name her and cover up my name. Wow. What a what a what a path there of name reveal and name uh cover up. I don't know how fancy word. Deception's not really the word I was going for. But anyway. Um so here's the names, and now I have to freaking decide and decide also if I like any other combos too. You know, honestly, I'm, I really thought I'd lean towards the fair prefix, the oath one, but the golden sister is really appealing to me. I don't even know if your character has siblings, but to me, in my real life, um, my sisters, I have many, <laughs> well, I have, I have a few, um, they are, and only sisters, only girls, um, they're very important to me. And I am the oldest, and I, you know, I feel a sense of responsibility towards them. So these, these ones seem more family-oriented in a way. I don't know. It's just like a vibe, you know, to me. And so I'm like, oh, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like her family would be really important to her. But I don't know how much... I, I, I'm going to bet that family doesn't really play much of a part in this game, because it's kind of hard to, like, try to, like, backstory all the options of a family, you know? 
And I definitely don't make characters that are like my tragic backstory. I'm like, she has a very healthy family life, actually. Like, she's got friends, got family, everybody's still alive. You know, she had a great life. She just wants to go adventuring. That That's always my, my D&D thing. <laughs> I think Uverdira is is popping out to me. And, like, the potentially religious connotation, too, of sister is not a bad thing, you know? Like, that works out for, like, the my head y type thing. Okay, here's the house names. I didn't have quite as... There weren't as good options in my mind, and I didn't even use some of them that I picked. Um, I like the ones I've got... I like the idea of the blessed by, the sworn to, sacred to, and walkers in. Okay, here it is. Here's the actual one. Walkers in the Forgotten Ways. I like the look of the Nogu names the best. But I think I'm leaning towards the Ken names for their meaning. Yeah, I think I'll go with Kinirin, sworn to history, sworn to remember history. It's kind of how it is to me. Like we are, we are all products of the histories of like our, not only like our immediate like you know relatives or ancestors, but like you know the history of the world at large. You know, so that has like such a far-reaching like grasp. I guess I don't know. Okay, Ulverdira Kinirin. That was uh, 40 minutes of, of work, I think, or more, <laughs> for the name. About the maybe the same amount of time almost as the actual character creation. We don't even have sliders. Okay. I also love the background music for this, but I think after what it's been like, started at seven and it's almost ten. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm ready. Ulvir Dira. Ulvir Dira Kinirin. Let's go. What? Oh my gosh. Are you serious? So because I picked... Now they tell me... Oh my gosh. This could change everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is a... Wait, what is a guardian? Like... I can change what my guardian looks like. I can go through this whole process again. Hey, mm, nope, I got, I have no idea what the guardian is and I am going to look it up. Okay, I don't know. Apparently, they, I, I am not trying to get spoiled too much, but it, from brief glances, it's maybe not a huge deal what they look like, but you have, you've got, you've got to be kidding me. I could do it all over again. Okay, I didn't do nearly as much work for her. I really just, um, she's a Celadrine drow as well. I don't know if this is like a god entity or like a deity, or if this is like guardian sounds like some sort of like deity type thing, or like a, like a guardian spirit or something, and not just like a person. Um, I'll give her the, the lichen skin tone that I wanted, all, that I was eyeing also. I'll give her, yep, okay. Don't want to do too much on that, but I like her hair. She's gonna have the lichen. I gave her the cool, like, fiery tattoo. Well, let's go. Oh my gosh. It's illithid. I know there's different kinds of, like, mind flare ties, but I think that's an illithid. <gasps> you dead. Why did, why did these two die? So mysterious. Dang, the audio sounded awesome, like, the way it moves. Oh my gosh! It's a ship. It's a living, it's a, it's a living ship. And it just uh, popped out on idyllic England, looks like. Yeah, the spear's not gonna do you much good. Dang, it can- I mean, I know they're like mind 
controlling entities, but... <gasps> oh, it just touches them and they... Oh, okay, I thought they died. I was like, oh my gosh, they turned to ash. No, they get, like, teleported. Awesome. That's cool. That's, uh, that's horrifying. Is that... No, they're in it. They look... I was like, I don't think the dragons and the mind creatures... <gasps> Oh, it's the Githyanki. They don't, they don't like the elephants at all. I know that much. They're probably trying to rescue their fellow Gith also. Hopefully they get to ride dragons though. That's cool. I was like, oh! They just punched a hole right in there. For all, for all you know, you could have fried your friend. If they're friends. I don't know if they're friends. Excuse me? What? What is this? This is sick! This is- what is all this dimensional teleportation stuff? Like an action movie. <laughs> what the heck? Like teleport out. Help me. Design. Three. Haha, <laughs> that was a three. Or Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, name drop. <laughs> oh, we're in hell. That's cool. No, that's super great. Love that for us. How did we get to hell? <laughs> hell and the illithids don't get along. Also, what is it? There's like there's like the demons and the devils, and they're two different things, and I and I live in different realms, and I keep looking it up all the time, mm -hmm. and I I always forget what the actual difference is. <laughs> it's your girl. Oh my gosh, look at me. I'm just, I'm just stunning. I do would like those numbers in the top right to disappear. Oh. Okay, good. My head. My head. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. We are in it. Um, I am gonna have to figure out what? Oh, with Mind Flayer Pod. I thought it was alive. Um, I am probably gonna call this one here. I generally, my first episode is basically character creation. And then, you know, you get started into the game, but, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and call it here and hope this is one episode. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you enjoy your time. I have a fairly extensive backlog, but you know, I'm gonna be hopefully uploading a bunch of these videos in the next like week or so at least. So, and if you're coming back, old friends, Welcome. I'm super excited. This will hold us over until Dragon Age Dread Wolf comes out. <laughs> I do really quick want to say thank you to my patrons. I, as of recently, decided to start shouting out all of them because we're a small group and I want to say thank you to all of you. So I want to say thank you to my acorns. Adam, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it, my friend. And I want to say thank you to Thane, my other acorn. Thank you so much for your support for a very long time. I very much appreciate it. 
And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support, my friend. I very much appreciate it. Yeah, these people are very helpful, very kind, and I've had other people in the past, you know, coming in and out, supporting me when they can. I do do the traveling lifestyle, so it's pr my video uploads are pretty sporadic, and my ability to play video games is limited in many capacities, um, but they've been supportive of me and that lifestyle, and I really, really appreciate it a lot, and I hope everybody enjoys this new series, as we all, like, it feels like half the world jumps on in so thank you all again for joining me and i hope to see you in the next episode